Hi, this is Allison Sheridan, and welcome to another edition of Screencast Online. Today, I'm going to teach you about pivot tables in numbers. Now, this may sound like a topic only the super spreadsheet nerds care about. While there is an element of truth to that, my goal is to show you how easy they are to make, and more importantly, the problem they may solve for you. Now, you may not need a pivot table to help solve a problem for you today, but someday you very well might. And my hope is that you'll remember this tutorial, and from that you'll remember that they're fun and easy to make. Now, of course, it's important to talk about the problem to be solved. In its simplest form, it's that you have a giant pile of data, and you want to turn that into information. Without turning it into information, it's impossible to make decisions or reach conclusions on a pile of data. Perhaps you're a system admin at a university, and you have a 3,000-line spreadsheet with user IDs, class names, instructors, testing requirements, and you need to condense this down to some actionable information. Maybe you're the manager of a large city's intramural sports teams, and you've got detailed data about the players, the sports they're playing, the field names, and the coaches, and you need situational awareness in case a storm is coming through town on how to contact people efficiently. Maybe you've been doing freelance work, and you've downloaded all of your income and expense, and you want to figure out where your income is coming from by category. Maybe you downloaded your health data for all of your exercise, and you want to obsess over it, but you need to see it summarized by type of exercise with total calories burned. These are just a few examples of the kind of problems that a pivot table can easily solve. As an example problem, I'm going to show you something near and dear to my heart. We want to analyze our home energy usage versus our solar power generation. The big question to be answered is, did we put in enough solar panels to cover our usage? We've collected 1,208 lines of data over the past few months. The file includes specific devices usage in kilowatt hours by day. Intermingled in the same file is also the solar power production by day, and worse yet, the total power usage for the day. So it's got all of the lines of data for each device and the total of all of those devices. To make it just that little bit more entertaining, as is almost always the case with spreadsheets, the dates aren't formatted properly for our use. This is a problem just crying out for a pivot table. We're going to start with numbers on macOS, and eventually I'll show you the differences in iPadOS and iOS on the iPhone. The first thing to know is that there is a prerequisite for your table of data if you're going to make a pivot table. Every single column that you need to use has to have a title in it. Worse yet, let's say we didn't have device model here in column F, columns G, H, and I would also not be included in our pivot table. So even if you put in some sort of word that doesn't mean anything at all into the column heading that you don't care about, you want to put it in there so that every column in your spreadsheet will be considered for your pivot table. Let's undo to put that back. Now, the columns I'm going to care about are going to be the date time column, and you'll notice this is date and time, and I absolutely don't want it to be date and time. That's going to mess us up later, and I'm going to purposely show you that it messes us up and how we can quickly fix it. I left this in here because it seems to happen to me every time I try to do anything with a spreadsheet, so it's good to know how to work on these things. I don't care about the device ID. The name of the device is kind of interesting, but I don't care about device type, make, model, or location, or even average wattage. What I really care about is the total kilowatt hours for these different devices. If we go to row 8, you'll notice that this says solar production, and over on the far right, it gives us negative kilowatt hours. It's good to keep in mind that negative numbers are good. Now, this was right around the first time we fired this up, so this negative number down here of negative 42 to 24, that's a much better solar day. That's just a quick preview of one of this week's Apple-related tutorials from Screencasts Online. Screencasts Online is your premium source of Apple-related video tutorials. All of our members get access to brand new, up-to-date tutorials each week, as well as unlimited access to our entire video archive full of Mac and iOS-related tutorials. You can stream and download all of our videos on your Mac, iPad and iPhone, and even your Apple TV using the members-only Screencasts Online Apple TV app. Membership also includes a complimentary subscription to the Digital Screencasts Online monthly magazine, published each month 
and packed with videos, articles, reviews, as well as hints and tips covering all aspects of the Mac, iPad, iPhone, and all of the other fantastic Apple products. So, if you're ready to start getting the most out of your Apple devices, visit ScreencastsOnline.com today and become a ScreencastsOnline member.